What's up, everybody? And today we are reacting to how fighter pilots train to fly Marine Corps F-35B boot camp. Uh, this is by Business Insider. They have some great documentaries. I've seen some about the uh, U.S. Marine boot camp and all that. Well, these guys are brilliant with these documentaries. So I will leave a link down below to the original video. Please go over there, give it a like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. I'm sure it's totally going to be worth it. Uh, but before we get started, original adventures. Me and my wife converted are, are converting a U.S. school bus and traveling the United States. If you want to check that out, both on YouTube and Instagram, link down below. It's a ton of fun. Really excited about that. Also, we reached 400,000 subscribers recently. So uh, thank you. You're amazing. I can't believe you did this. It's crazy still. I, I, I'm still speechless about it. It's shocking. Um, but anyway, with that being said, let's shut up. Let's pop this up and let's watch it. This is the F-35B Lightning II. Wait a second. Is that, gonna, is that cockpit open? What's that? What's that? This open? Oh no, it's not. The Marine Corps' multi-role fighter jet is equipped with the most advanced sensor suite of any fighter in history. Wow. And the most powerful engine of any jet in the world. That's which incredible. Can reach a top speed of 1,200 miles per hour. That's 1,200 miles per hour. Holy! That's incredible. Nearly as fast as Ronaldo. <laughs> Just revolutionized what fighter aircraft are capable of. And these are the pilots training to fly that $100 million aircraft. $100 million. Like, you know, I'd rather take the money. Actually, no, I'd rather fight a jet. I thought I don't think my wife would be happy, though. And she's like, where's that $100 million going? I'd be like, oh, look in the garden. <laughs> show up fly and then go home have a beer but it's not all like that yeah fair well not only are you flying but you're talking on four different radios you're working the radar you're working the t flare you're working the electrical optical system there while yep. you're still navigating talking to atc yep. and then working weapons on top of that yeah so these guys i feel like they don't get enough praise um pilots are truly truly astonishing with the amount of knowledge that they have the amount of training that they have everything has to be like incredibly quick like they it's like muscle memory they just they're really smart people they're really smart people student pilots spend a year training to fly the f-35 bravo here at the marine corps air station in beaufort south carolina this is a pilot's last stop before getting deployed to a fleet squadron overseas. That's amazing. And it's here they learn to handle the multi-role fighter jet in a variety of missions. We do strikes, so uh, aerial interception. Yeah. We do OCA DCA, so offensive counter air, defensive counter air, arm reconnaissance, and then uh, really the bread and butter though is seed, so suppression of enemy air defenses. That's so cool. It makes me wonder though, this super, super specialized um, career that they have in the military, I'm sure a lot of them go on to kind of stay in the military and become off like higher officers and don't necessarily fly anymore after that and do do bigger and bigger roles in the military. But what do the people do who do this for a few years and then leave? Like, do they fly commercial planes? Like, do they just retire because they probably made a bucket load of money doing this? Like, what? I wonder what they actually do after that. The pilots we met are part of Marine Fighter Attack Squadron 501, also known as the Warlords. What a cool name. I'm sorry to keep pausing it, but it still baffles me. Like, you couldn't go to any other job after this, right? Like, you couldn't go and work a desk job. Like, you, <laughs> you fight a pilot and it's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go work on a desk job. It just doesn't work. You were in the Warlords. You were flying these top-of-the-range F-35B fighter jets. And then what do you do after that? Nothing will ever compare. Once you complete here, they send you out to the fleet squadrons, you know, out in Yuma or Japan. That mustache. The pilots in the training squadron have already completed flight school. Yeah. So training is focused specifically on operating the F-35B. Eventually, every fighter pilot that comes through the Marine Corps is going to go fly an F-35. Wow. I'm uh, Michael Watts. I'm a major in the Marine Corps. My grandfather was a pilot in World War II, and I would always go to his house. He is models of his b-25 bomber and also my father was a navy pilot in vietnam so i kind of holy cow this guy this guy I grew up with it you know in my blood right here we're just basically starting you learn how to fly the airplane and then you go through all the different mission sets and basic skills 
Because there are only so many jets that can fly at a time, most of the pilot's instruction comes on the ground. What a cool ass family that is. Granddad was a pilot in World War II. Dad was a pilot in Vietnam. He's now a pilot flying the F-35B. What an incredible lineage. Like, imagine being his son and being like, oh, shit, like, I gotta do something. I gotta fly a plane, guys. It's like, it's gonna happen. He's gonna give birth to a plane, I think, at this point. If he keeps, <laughs> if he keeps going in this, in this line. In the simulator and in the classroom, we weren't allowed to film some classified aspects of right. the pilot's instruction. That makes sense. But we were allowed to film the pilots practicing the aircraft's most unique capabilities. And what's that? behind the scenes as they suited up for a training mission. During so training, cool. It's crucial for the pilots to get comfortable executing the F-35B's stovel maneuvers because they'll have to master those techniques on an aircraft carrier. So really the cool. Main thing is when we fly off the ship. So when I get out to Japan here in a few weeks, I'll eventually be learning how to fly off the ship. How do we get on there? We do vertical landings. How do we take off? We do short takeoffs. And so that's really the, the big reason why we're doing that. Lockheed Martin makes three variations of the F-35 Lightning II, but the Marine Corps' F-35 Bravo is the only one with stovel capabilities. This feature is a big reason why the Marine Corps' 2019 aviation plan called for replacing its current fleet of aircraft with more than 350 F-35Bs. Oh, 350 of these absolute devils! Shocking. Also, what is that thing that's up? The toilet seat. Who's leaving the toilet? Why? Like, because it's taking off, and surely that's not good for aerodynamics. What does that do? Let me know in the comments if you know about that. By the way, you guys in the comments giving me information about these videos. Fantastic. Keep it up, please, because it really does help me. Why is that up? Why is that toilet seat up? We're replacing all of the Hornets, all of the Harriers, and all the Prowlers with F-35s. Oh, my days. Conventional jets need about 3,000 feet for takeoff. But in optimal conditions, an F-35B can take off in just a couple hundred feet. For a takeoff, wow. we get onto the runway, and then at that point is when we initiate a conversion. We literally just hit a button, and then the plane like goes through its like transformer sequence, right? That is so cool. Once that's complete, we're now what's called stovel mode. There's different kinds of short takeoffs we can do. My favorite's the, the button. It's called a button stow. And as I'm accelerating down the runway and literally just click a button and then the plane will take off by itself. It's pretty, pretty What? Cool. At this point, I feel like it'll just be an Xbox controller in there. But no, I bet you look in there and I bet there's an ungodly amount of things you've got to learn. And then shortly after takeoff, we can convert back to conventional mode once we get to a certain airspeed. That's once really in cool. the air, actually handling the jet isn't the most difficult aspect of operating it. It's actually a really easy airplane to fly. It's more difficult to process the amount of information it provides to you, I would say, knowing where to look at the right time. The student pilots already have experience flying jets, so much of their training is focused on utilizing technology unique to the F-35B. So it makes sense, right? These new planes with the amount of technology we have, it, it feels like we'd go through a curve, right? So like Spitfires and stuff during World War One and World War, is it World War II Spitfires came out? World War One. I? I don't know. Anyway, um, pretty basic planes, right? There isn't much information on in front of you apart from the dials that you need for altitude and stuff. I'm sure I'm probably butchering this. And then you get the start of the jets where it gets really complicated and there's a lot of different things. And then you get these really high-tech F-35Bs where... Even though they have more information to process, it's just a click of a button to take off. So the, the functionality like of how to fly it is probably much easier than, than them first fighter jets. But it feeds you information. Like it's just feeding you everything that's going on around you constantly. Pretty amazing. And I feel like it would get even more simple as time goes on and technology gets better. It would be even more simple to fly them and then you'd get even more information and more techniques on what to do. But at what point do we just switch from these jets and just start using drones like you know like what i mean obviously these have the capability to go and fly until they've run out of fuel and they don't need someone you know with an antenna pointing at it basically but what 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 point do we stop and say do we really need to put people in these because obviously if you click a button and it takes off pretty amazing a lot of the difficulty is trying to absorb all of the information the jet's giving you operate all the sensors and the systems at the same time and fly and really that's probably the number one struggle yeah once a practice mission is complete pilots must take on another of the jet's unique features just landing executing a vertical landing 
having never done it, it was an experience. My brain telling me not to slow down because uh, in the Hornet, slow down, that meant you're gonna fall out of the sky. It's a normal approach to landing, like you're, as if you're going to the runway, right? And then you're gonna level off and then set a certain ground speed. And then at a certain distance from the pad, you're gonna start a deceleration. And all that is is just a click of a button. And then from there, you're making sure that you're centered on the pad. Then you just push forward on the stick and then descend right onto the pad. That's so cool, but I'm trying to think of the physics behind this because the jet engine's on the back, right? The jet engine, I don't know if you can see this, but my mouse is a bit small. It's like here. So what's stopping the front end from just going boop and going down? Like, I mean, obviously I'm no engineer and the people who make these aircraft are literally some of the smartest people in the world. But I just don't understand. Is there small little jets around the actual whole plane that does this? Surely that takes an ungodly amount of fuel to take off vertically and, and land vertically, right? Wow. Star Wars, isn't it? I would say the first time doing a vertical landing in the F-35B is, is pretty crazy. You practice it a lot in the sim. You do it, you know, dozens of times in the simulator. But the yeah. first time you do it in the plane, just slowing down for the first time like that and hovering over a pad with over 30,000 pounds of metal, 150 feet in the air, it's yeah. pretty neat. I bet it is. You have like the world kind of coming at you when you're flying, right? And so you're kind of sitting there just like looking outside as if you're like in the tower or something and you trust that you're, you're fine there, you know, that you're still flying. <laughs> Before stepping foot in the cockpit, student pilots need to familiarize themselves with the gear needed to operate the F-35B, starting with their anti-gravity suit, which helps prevent them from losing consciousness while operating the jet. Anti-gravity suit. This sounds so sci-fi, guys. It feels like I'm watching something out of Star Wars or Halo or Dune or something like that. It's a fabric material that has bladders inside of it. And okay. whenever you pull G, it uses pressure from the engine to inflate. And then it prevents your blood from pulling down to your legs and it pushes it up to your abdomen as much as possible. That's cool. Each pilot's G suit is custom made to fit perfectly around their lower body. And That's cool. We have a flight jacket that we put on, and it has a bunch of survival gear. The pilot's flight jacket is filled with a multitude of survival tools yeah. in the event that they have to eject from the aircraft, including a flare, emergency strobe light, yeah. compass, survival knife, extra water, whistle, radio, Holy and cow. an oxygen mask. Yeah. They have a code car for hand and arm signals, just a signal search and rescue, basically. Then they have a signaling mirror. Just a signal the aircraft was just a mirror and a reflection. Some less conventional survival tools are supplied by the pilots themselves. Yeah. I was trying to take my wallet in case I have to, to land somewhere else other than back here. That's happened to me before. You land somewhere and you have to stay the night, you don't have any wallet or phone or anything, which is kind of difficult. So, uh, definitely. Is that to land somewhere else and just take your wallet and just be like, oh, by the way, here's my ID. Uh, I'm a pilot. I take my wallet with me every time. In the event the pilots have to eject from the jet, their flight jacket is embedded with a unique safety feature. There's arm restraint lines that are routed throughout the jacket. When you eject, they pull your arms basically in towards your body. You're basically ensuring that your arms aren't going to get flailed out into the wind. Oh, that's cool. The jacket is also equipped with a flotation device. Right. In case the pilot has to eject over a body of water. That makes so sense. as soon as it touches the water, it will inflate the entire jacket so they don't have to do anything if their arms are broken or anything after ejection. That makes sense. Last but not least, the pilots learn to utilize the most technologically advanced piece of equipment, their $400,000 helmets. $400,000? Holy! Each helmet is custom fit to its wearer, based on a 3D scan of the pilot's head. It's also equipped with noise-canceling headphones, night vision, and a forward-facing camera that records each flight. That has got to be one of the coolest things. I wonder if they get to keep it. Uh, surely they don't because it's military, it's military gear, isn't it? The pilot's heads-up display is projected directly onto their visor what? rather than on the glass at the front of the cockpit thanks to two small projectors inside the helmet. This allows the pilot to easily view key data such as altitude, airspeed, and direction. Since Amazing. The jet is able to help us so much, really flying should be second nature. That way you can focus on all of the information that the jet's giving you. That's incredible. Finally, the F 35's distributed aperture system creates a 360 degree view of the jet's surroundings by stitching together feeds from six cameras mounted on the plane.
What? So they can basically like see through the floor and every. Guys, this is so frigging cool. I should have done this instead of the Royal Marines. <laughs> Enabling the pilot to see through the base and walls of the aircraft. I might have had 20, like I have 20, 20 vision or maybe I don't anymore. I don't know. I haven't been tested, but I, I probably physically could have done it mentally though. I probably wasn't smart enough. These guys are so smart. I think a lot of people underestimate the amount of work it takes to, to become a pilot. I bet. A pilot specifically. A one hour flight, even a simulated one might mean up to six additional hours of briefing. Yeah. up flight inspections and debriefing. About to mention the hours spent studying for each mission. So yeah. you could spend a whole day preparing and debriefing one single hour of flight. Yeah. I think it's awesome to be in the fifth generation stealth fighter, kind of at the tip of the spear. It's a heavily weighted aircraft in terms of the combat power that the Marine Corps brings to the fight. And I'm honored to be a part of that. Good. It's definitely pretty cool to, you know, carry on that tradition talk to my dad about everything that I'm doing now and how it relates to what he did. All the airports that he flew into, you know, some of the ones that I've flown into as well. So he has <laughs> stories. It's pretty neat. That's so cool. That is so cool. What a great, great video, guys. That might be one of the best ones I think I've ever reacted to. Not only was it super interesting, like it was just so impressive, like crazy impressive. This guy with his bloodline like they are literally born to be fighter pilots this remarkable i will leave a link down below to the original video go over there give it a like because that was fantastic nine minutes just shy of 10 minutes of pure information about things that i will never be able to do and never even had the opportunity to do nor the genetics to do <laughs> members you're amazing i love you i couldn't do this without you i honestly couldn't make videos every single day if it wasn't for these members so thank you for supporting the channel as much as you do i truly truly appreciate it uh, links down below to original adventures me and my wife are converting a u.s school bus and traveling in the united states if you want to check that out link down below highly recommend it it's a ton of fun um also link down below to my socials my discord my podcast and my twitch stream where i stream every tuesday and thursday and also link down below to my second channel original human geek where we play DD and a bunch of other fun stuff until next time, guys, I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.